brand new facility being built just down the road. A lot of great memories here. They're looking to make a few more. First pitch in from Krings. Misses for a ball. Well, a lot of people may wonder why Missouri goes with Krings back-to-back -back games. This game matters. You've got to bring your best. Krings is their best pitcher, pitching her best at this time in the season. And it only took her 85 pitches last night, feeling fresh. This is why you work so hard in the weight room, in the bullpens, all season long. You practice to get to this moment. Just one run allowed in Missouri's 5-1 win against Cal yesterday. That was on a solo home run from Tatum and Zaldo. No walks, three strikeouts for Cranes in that game, but here she sits with a 3-0 count to one of the most dangerous hitters in the country. But she only had one three ball count the entire game yesterday against Cal. And there is a strike. Three one bounces off the dirt. Coleman fired up just to get on base. All that enthusiasm is contagious. Just really, not only at the top of the lineup does she pro provide offense with her bat, the stolen bases, with her speed, but it's that in infectious enthusiasm that just really goes through the rest of the Sooner lineup. Tiara Jennings next up for the Sooners, junior second baseman. Pops it up and back, both Jennings and Coleman and Lee and Hansen, the first four in this lineup for Oklahoma, all Big 12 first team selections. Both Coleman and Jennings, members of the Women's College World Series all tournament team last year when Oklahoma won their second straight national championship, sixth overall. Jennings fouled off a couple that were not able to be caught. This one is, and she is retired. Well, every out is celebrated when you're facing this potent lineup of Oklahoma. Garrett Daly did a nice job finding the fence over there. When you're the visiting team, you got to practice those things, you know, on the practice day. And she knew exactly where she was, and that is a huge out for Oklahoma. Haley Lee, the red shirt senior, transfer from Texas A&M, where she spent the last four years, new to the Sooner team this season. Coleman will head back to first. Hesitated. And Oklahoma's not a big stolen base team. I mean, they hit a lot of home runs. You know, they don't they don't really need to move base to base, but they do have 44 steals on the year. Coleman by far has the most, the only one in double digits. She is the biggest steal threat in this Sooner lineup. Talking stolen bases, that is certainly much more of the storyline for this Missouri team they have by far the most stolen bases of any team in this region. I see those 44 for Oklahoma. Well, Missouri has 102 on the season. They're ranked second in the SEC. Two out of Lee, finds a gap into right field. And Peyton Jackson out there, taking no chances, making sure Coleman doesn't have any ideas about moving any further. Well, the second baseman, Gallagher, is playing a little bit up the middle because she had steel coverage, and Haley Lee takes an outside pitch, lets it get deep 
into the plate. See how far Gallagher's playing up the middle. Haley Lee sees that, takes that outside pitch, drives it into right field for a singer, single, and the Sooners have a runner in scoring position. Now Oklahoma hit up and down their lineup yesterday in their run rule victory. Scored 11 runs, had 12 hits, but nobody swung it better or as consistently as Kinsey Hansen, who's up at the plate now. Perfect three for three on the day. Had four RBI, a double, scored two runs. And that performance from Hansen, uh, Coach Gasso rewarded her by moving her up in the lineup. And, and you see a different lineup day after day from Oklahoma. They really are big believers in, hey, get the hottest hitters together at the top of the lineup. And this lineup will fluctuate from day to day, not really with Coleman and with Jennings in the one two spot, but the rest of the order, it varies a lot. Well, Hanson hitting 5-10 with runners in scoring position on the season. Close to 400 overall for her batting average. Missed the last couple of games of the regular season after she was hit by a pitch. So getting back, obviously feeling good when she's been swinging the bat. Well, Kring's having a tough time settling in here in this first inning. She's thrown quite a few pitches and and let's face it you you're really trying to stretch the corners you're trying to spin the ball a little more this this is a tough lineup to get out but we've seen her bounce a few into the plate we didn't see that at all last night just again trying to settle in here early in this game and plenty of postseason experience for this Missouri team as well Tigers making their 26th appearance in a regional as a program, their 16th straight. They hosted the last couple of years. Still though, I think you might understand some nerves coming to the home of the six-time national champs. Hansen has it caught and Gallagher over at second able to get out number two. Good pitch from Krang. She was able to run that ball in on the hands of Hansen. Really jammed her up to get the out. And despite the amount of pitches Krings has thrown in this inning, really not as many challenging pitches as she typically throws. She she's now finds herself one out from getting out of this inning unscathed. Sydney Sanders, sophomore playing first base for the Sooners. Transfer from Arizona State. Looking for her first hit of the regional. Over two yesterday, did reach via walk. Two base runners for the Sooners. Sanders swings and the runners waste no time advancing. So now on second and third, that was strike two. Well, there was a lot happening in one pitch there. Lauren Krings threw an outstanding off-speed pitch. Really fooled Sanders, but an even better read by Jada Coleman. The moment that ball was in the dirt, she took off, easily got herself to third base. Double steal for the Sooners. Haven't had too many stolen bases in this regional thus far. Had more runners caught stealing yesterday in our two games and we did have successful stolen base attempts. Outside. It's 
Sophomore Julia Crenshaw behind the plate for Missouri. Krings had been moving the ball outside, inside, both sides of the plate. Sid Sanders, watch how tight she keeps her hands. This is a pitch on the inner half of the plate. She's able to keep her hands in, but get her barrel through enough to keep the ball fair. This is what Oklahoma does. They know how to perform when it means the most. Those two out RBIs key in the postseason. Sid Sanders just got two more. Senior shortstop Grace Lyons now the batter. She had one hit yesterday, but it was a big one to run home run in the second inning as Oklahoma scored every inning that they came to the plate in that run rule shortened game against Hofstra. Jen, you think about that pitch we talked about that went in the dirt earlier. And Jada Coleman and Haley Lee were able to advance 60 feet while on Sid Sanders' hit. If Haley Lee's at first base, more than likely, she's not going to score on that play. So every pitch matters, every play matters. By a good heads up base running, that allowed Oklahoma to get two runs. Pop up to right. Jackson has it, and that will end the inning. But the Sooners. So many numbers, so impressive for this Oklahoma team. So they're the best hitting team in the country. They're also the best in fielding and in ERA. And you mentioned this yesterday, Carol, but amongst all of the accolades that are so impressive with this Oklahoma program, which is clearly building a dynasty with what they've done, winning four of the last six national championships, no team has ever finished the season leading the country in those three main team categories in the history of our sport. I mean, there's just so many ways to try and talk about the dominance of this program and just the high level they've been performing at all season long. And some teams are really strong on pitching and defense. And they struggle to score. Some can really score a lot, play good defense, but their pitching struggles. This Oklahoma team, as you mentioned, Jen, tops in the country in every single category right now. Where would you say for Missouri their strength is certainly a very different path for the Tigers to get here finished last in the SEC but played their best softball they felt at the end of the season won a big series at home against a ranked Arkansas team beat Mississippi State in the SEC tournament to get here. Well there's no doubt about it their defense is their strength they're in the top 15 in team fielding percentage in the country. Another foul ball there by Laird. They play very solid defense. And when you play defense, you give yourself a chance to win every game. Because your, your offense can, you can hit the ball hard, but right at people and not have a lot to show for it. So it's always been a cornerstone of the Missouri program, that defense. And this year, it's the stolen base. It's their speed. They're twice as many stolen bases this season than they did the last two combined. And Jenna Laird certainly leading that charge. If she can find a way on. Hits it over to Lions at shortstop and the three time Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year makes the play. I mean, how much fun is she to watch at shortstop? This ball is hit to her backhand, takes one step, but look how quickly the transfer occurs from her backhand, gets the ball up and into her throwing hand and out of her glove in the blink of an eye. That is not easy to do. There is no wasted motion. Just an outstanding play from Grace Lyons. And she retires a red hot Jenna Laird who was eight for her last 12 coming into that at bat. Five straight hits. Now it's Alex Honnold. And these top two hitters for Missouri really set so much of the tone for the rest of the lineup. Honnold on the season leading the team in most offensive categories, including batting average, home runs. Hit her 14th of the season yesterday. Two run shot in the first inning. Go, go. 
And Hanna was showing bunt right there. Just she's she can do it all as well from the left side. Just really one of the most impactful players in the country because of her combination of speed and power. It really creates a lot of runs for this Missouri offense. Junior set. I mean, Honnold is one of the best in the country in terms of on-base percentage, batting average, slugging percentage. She walks a great deal. A lot of teams pitch around her in this lineup, and yet she still has been able to perform at a very high level, especially behind Laird in the two spot in the lineup. They're really a, a, a dynamic duo in the one-two spot. Looked like she went and she did. So the first strikeout of the day, a big one for Ball. Want to see that rise ball from Jordy Ball coming right at you. This one clearly out of the strike zone, but with Honnold behind in the count with two strikes, she's protecting. It's got a lot of heat on it, kind of an excuse me swing and a big out for Jordy Ball. First pitch, a strike to the sophomore third baseman, Kira Daly for the Tigers. Comes into this game on a five game hitting streak. Went one for four yesterday. Drove in a run. No well inside, both players going for it. Somehow Hanson keeps that in her glove. The only blemish for the Sooners thus far. 789 coming up here for the Sooners. Third baseman Alyssa Brito to lead off the inning. Brito two for three yesterday, scored a couple of runs. I mean, this is a team that not only produces, we, we talked about the amount of home runs, just the amount of scoring, but what, what gets neglected a little bit is their amount of walks. I mean, they walk, their walk to strikeout ratio is absolutely phenomenal. They walk two times for every one strikeout, and that just doesn't happen as you get into the month of May. Usually you see the reverse of that for teams. They're going to have a lot more strikeouts than they are walks, but this team is very disciplined. They make you throw it over the plate, and when you do, they make you pay. Beautiful day, a lot of sunshine here today in the 70s is Brito hits it to Laird for out number one. And then the only change to the lineup, there was some shifting in positions for the lineup, but freshman Jocelyn Erickson getting the start in right field in this game for the Sooners. She appeared as a pinch runner in her first NCAA game yesterday, wound up scoring the run. Now she takes her first regional at bat. Could be over in one pitch, and it is. Well, Lauren Krings, after throwing a lot of pitches in that first inning and really some non-competitive pitches, pitches that were over the backstop and bouncing in the dirt, has really settled in here in the second inning. And this is an important bounce back inning for her. Two quick outs. Yeah, Lauren Krings leading this Missouri team in the circle in so many categories throughout the season. Innings pitched, strikeouts, complete games, wins. And this is the third time all season that she has had back-to-back -back starts. So she has been put in this position before. Of course, this time it's happening on back-to-back -back days.
Well, unless, unless you needed to win your conference tournament to punch your ticket into the NCAA tournament, that would be your most important game of the year at that point. But for a lot of teams, Missouri, Oklahoma included, this is the most important day and the most important game of the year. If you lose this game, you've got to play later tonight, and then you've got to beat somebody twice tomorrow. The winner of this game gets to go take a shower, go relax, <laughs> get some snacks, go watch the rest of the softball world, what's happening, you know, do a little scouting, and, and you need one win tomorrow to punch your ticket to Super. So it's just, it's such an important game. It, it's an extremely meaningful game. And so there's no doubt Missouri's gonna turn to Lauren Krings and give her the ball in this situation. She's gonna let her defense go to work and get three up. Larissa Anderson in her fifth year in charge of this program. One win away from win number 300 of her career, by the way. And trying to be the party crasher. That's a motto they took up after we mentioned. It's been pretty well documented. Missouri having a difficult time in the SEC this season. An ultra competitive league that, by the way, went 11-1 yesterday in day one of regional play. Finishing last in the conference in the regular season, but getting hot at the right time. RPI high enough, you see, with a lot of quality opponents. And the message was, well, we know we're not going to host, but let's see if we can get to the postseason and crash somebody else's party. Yeah, different team from Missouri this year. It's a young team. They lost a lot of their offense from a year ago. Had to find ways to replace that. Really did it through their speed, stolen bases, but not the power numbers, home runs. And there's lots of ways to get to the postseason. Missouri had a very unique road this year, but very pleased to be playing here in this winner's bracket game on Saturday. Julia Crenshaw was retired, hit it back to ball for out number one. Now Riley Frizzell, the junior First baseman looking for her first hit here in Norman. 0 for 3 yesterday. Lions on top of it. Four out number two. Don't miss a minute of the action from the NCAA softball regionals. You know where to go. We're going to take you the best live action on the seven innings live show. It's on the ESPN app where you can see every game and every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. It's tough to keep up with all the games going on across the country. I think that's a good problem to have. I know. Absolutely. Clemson winners earlier today, beating the Auburn Tigers 7-0. Valerie Cagle, one of the three finalists for USA Softball Player of the Year, had a big game in the circle and at the plate. The winner of this regional, by the way, will face the winner of that Clemson regional in Supers. Gallagher hits it to Jennings, and it's another three up, three down. Quick inning just in the first inning. No scoring in the second. Now here we go, top of the third. Oklahoma, as odd as it may feel, visitors in this game. That's just how it works in the NCAA regional. So back to the top of the lineup, and Jada Coleman, who walked and came around to score in the first. A little bit of a different feel from yesterday. This Oklahoma lineup saw a new pitcher just about every time through the lineup as Hofstra used five pitchers in five innings yesterday, just trying to do something to get this Oklahoma lineup off balance. And that's nothing new for Oklahoma. It's, it's pretty rare to see the same pitcher pitch a complete game against this lineup. And for teams who have that deep staff, it's absolutely a great strategy to use. Let's give them a rise ball pitcher for a couple innings, a drop ball pitcher for a couple innings, a little off-speed pitcher. Just anything you can do to disrupt balance, disrupt timing, disrupt momentum. Danger zone here as it's a 3-0 count and the battery having a conversation about how they want to handle this upcoming pitch to the Big 12 player of the year. 
Coleman, a two-time first-team All-American, three-time All-Big 12 first-team selection. Rio pitch in for strike number one. Bowman takes another, and Krings has battled her way back to a full count. That good off-speed pitch from Krings. And Coleman showing her patience, wasn't really looking for that pitch, knew she had another strike to work with. Just has a lot of confidence, she and Tiari Jennings as well, the one-two hitters here for Oklahoma. A lot of confidence with their two-strike hitting. That pitch does miss low, so Coleman walks for the second time in the game. And now perhaps we will see a pitching change. Well, this also could be a strong redirect from Coach Anderson. She saw Krings and what she was capable of doing last night. It was in a really good rhythm, working ahead of hitters, limited the free passes, and that, that led to a complete game, 85-pitch victory for Lauren Krings. And we've seen her now have two walks already in this game, both to Jada Coleman, both leadoff walks, which also can be a big, as everybody out there knows, a huge detriment. Coleman came around to score in that first inning. Megan Schumacher getting warmed up in the bullpen, but Krings will face off against Jennings. Got Jennings to pop up back in the first. Coleman was on the move. She'll have to go back as this one is caught by Honnold out in center. Krings has certainly had Jennings' number today, really working that outer part of the zone. Two fly ball outs. Bounce back, you know, we've seen that a lot today from Krings, some bounce back outs. After giving up something, she's come right back to get the next out. Lee single, came around to score. First time up. She'll have another hit in this game, and Coleman is on the move. They're giving her the signal to come on home. The throw won't even be made as Jada Coleman speeds around the base paths. Haley Lee stumbles a little bit over at second, but is in safely with a smile. Well, we've seen this twice today. Opposite field hitting from Haley Lee, and not just opposite field hitting, but with power as she drives in her legs, gets this ball all the way to the fence, and that leadoff walk that Lauren Krings gave up to Jada Coleman comes back a second time to hurt the Tigers as her speed gets her around to score. Oklahoma now up three. Kinsey Hansen try to keep things moving for the Sooners. The margin of error when you play this Oklahoma team is just minuscule because they pounce on every thing that you give them. You just try to limit. First thing you have to do is not give them more than three outs in an inning. You know, you've got to play solid defense. And the second thing is you've got to limit those big innings when they have a ton of momentum. They can put up runs in a hurry. Hanson, see ya! Speaking of getting runs in a hurry, Kinsey Hansen smacks one over the fence for two more.
I'm not sure we have a hitter seeing the ball as well and swinging as confident as Kinsey Hansen here in Norman. This pitch left too much over the plate. Hansen knew it the moment it left the bat. Oklahoma making a statement early in this game. Sydney Sanders had her first hit of the regional. Last time up, scored the first two runs with her single. And still just one out in the inning. One fly ball from Tiara Jennings, the only out recorded so far. A walk, a double, a home run. What's happened around it? Can she keep it fair? No. Certainly had the depth. Made it out to home run village, but it was foul ball village on that instance. I mean, you know, Oklahoma scores runs, but how they score runs is equally more <laughs> impressive, the home run. So this is their 54th game of the season, and they've now homered in 47 of them. Very impressive. And Oklahoma, as Sanders is retired, came into the postseason second in the country in terms of total home runs behind Virginia Tech, but we're leading in home runs per game. Sooners led the nation in the long ball each of the last couple of years. Well, and here's the thing about Oklahoma. You think, okay, our team can hit too if you're the opponent. We can come back. We, we can find a way here. And certainly every team can. But remember, their pitching staff is also number one in the country in terms of ERA. So it's very difficult. They do not give up a lot of runs. It is tough to score in a hurry against Oklahoma. And, oh, by the way, they have the number one defense in the country. So it's so important to try to manage the score because it is very difficult to score a lot of runs against Oklahoma as well. I'd imagine if you're Missouri, you've got to keep a lot of that just out of your mind, right? And just looking at it as one pitch, just get this next out and then let your bats go to work and be overwhelming. Start thinking about all of those factors. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And we saw Missouri score in bunches last night. You know, and this is a team we've, we've seen them score in bunches throughout the season. The power numbers are not their strength. It doesn't mean they don't have power. We saw Alex Honnold with the two run home run last night. We've seen Kara Daly with a couple walk off home runs to it at Arkansas to win that series. Well, this is a team very, very capable of making things happen. And of course they can steal bases. Pitch inside to Lions. Well, it's a good way to finish the inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Coach Larissa Anderson. And coach, how do you talk to your team at this point in terms of maybe not looking at the scoreboard, not thinking about the opponent, and how you fight back in this one? And maybe she is not hearing us. Coach, you hearing us okay? 
I'm thinking not. <laughs> well, we apologize for that. We'll see if we can get Larissa Anderson's oh. audio working. Oh, you got us now? <laughs> loud. Oh, and now we're too loud. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, now we are joined by Larissa Anderson. Just asking about the mindset at this point. What you tell your team now that you find yourselves needing some more runs to get back in this? Oh, we got to chip away. We got to have, we got to hit the ball hard. Um, right now, she's dominating inside and we're jamming ourselves. Um, they're hittable pitches and we're just driving her hands down. So we got to get the barrel on the ball so we can hit the ball hard. All right. Well, we don't want to keep you any longer. Thank you so no, much. Thanks. Just keep it simple, right? Do what you know you can do. Don't make it bigger than it is, but maybe easier said than done. Well, when you face a pitcher like Jordy Ball, you know, she provides a lot of power. What Coach Anderson is talking about is, you know, getting the barrel out in front of the ball. They, it feels like they're a little lagging with the barrel and they're getting on top of it, just beating it into the ground. That's why we've seen a lot of ground ball outs. Seven, eight, nine portion of the lineup here for the Tigers, led by senior Megan Mall, designated player in the lineup for the Tigers today. Mall and Ball in this matchup with Jordy Ball in the circle. Off to a tremendous start for Oklahoma. Well, of course, this atmosphere feels different. It is the NCAA tournament. This game is very meaningful, but both of these teams have played a very tough schedule this season. So this this particular game feels no different than a lot of games they've played so far. Both of these programs playing a lot of teams in the top 25 consistently. Yeah, and that was one of the things that Oklahoma coach Patty Gasso talked to us about when we were asking about this regional field. Yes, they're the number one overall seed. Yes, the rest of the country wants to know, can anybody beat Oklahoma? But she said, look, these teams here are tested. Missouri coming through the SEC. Cows come through the Pac-12. Hofstra had to win their conference tournament in dramatic fashion, so they come in with some confidence. And you don't take any opponent lightly, and I think Patty Gasso's probably learned a few things in her time and the success that she has had leading this Oklahoma team. Ball. Got it. A little bit of a delayed call from our home plate umpire, but it was indeed a strikeout. Jordy Ball goes to her off speed pitch, really paints the outside corner. Megan Mall didn't think so, but that is a beautiful pitch on the corner. No doubt about it. The strikeout for Ball. Can this bottom part of the order for Missouri? get something going they struggled yesterday seven eight and nine able to get much happening for the tigers oh jordy ball's done a nice job so far today of working from ahead now you look up and it's 01, 02. She's been able to, with her two strikeouts, she's got them on two different pitches, one with the rise ball, one with the off speed. And when you have that combination where you can stretch all four quadrants and mix speeds and throw them on any count, you're going to have a, a lot of success. 02 to Peyton Jackson will miss. Two straight balls. Oh, 
And there are some pitchers. He's getting loose a little bit. Bullpen for Oklahoma. McCole May had the start game one yesterday. Back to back strikeouts. Get the job done. And, and what you gotta embrace about Jordy Ball is she pitches to her personality. It's like coaches have to coach to their personality. Pitchers have to pitch to their personality. Some are poised and calm and stoic. And, and that gets him in their rhythm and their groove. With Jordy Ball, she's fiery out there, walks around. We'll have to have a little Fitbit on her and see how much, how many <laughs> steps she really uh, takes during a game. But that gets her in her best place for success. She's able to corral that energy, corral that competitiveness. Two quick strikeouts in this inning. Yeah, I don't think there's a movement, an arm swing, a step that doesn't look like it's made with confidence from Jordy Ball, no doubt about it. Maddie Snyder, the batter getting her first look at Ball. Sophomore who stayed at home to go to Mizzou from Columbia, Missouri. rest of the Oklahoma team wears yellow ribbons. They sometimes will pick a cause. It's for pediatric cancer awareness, but Jordy Ball is gonna stick with that red, white, and blue. That is part of who she is, to your point. Playing, pitching to your personality. here. Well, Snyder making it work a little bit. That good at bat from Snyder, really battling. Just, you see the lag on the barrel, though. The barrel's a little bit late getting to the zone. Now, a lot of that has to do with, at any point in time, Jordy Ball has that off-speed pitch as well. So just really, sometimes that can get in the head of hitters. You're thinking too much instead of just reacting. Swing and a miss. One, two. We're going to show snacks. They better be some coming up to the booth soon. <laughs> but uh, Oklahoma is certainly snacking on opponents. That is my terrible segue as their offense not letting up. Good start today after their opening round performance yesterday. And you may notice that home decal the shape of the state of Oklahoma on their helmets. We were talking to Patty Gasso about that, and 2013 was one of the worst tornadoes to ever come through the area, hit more Oklahoma, and at that time, a lot of those families who were affected came here to Oklahoma, got to enjoy some softball, and Patty Gasso pulled us. That was really one of her most special memories here at Marita Hines Field was the way they were able to lift up the community in the face of tragedy like that. And now, 10 years later, it's a 10-year anniversary of that tornado. They decided to put those logos back on the batting helmets for the postseason. And you could tell how meaningful that symbol and that time frame was for Coach Gasso when she was talking about it. Clearly very emotional about the whole situation and just so, so just uh, grateful to be able to bring some joy to those families during that very difficult time. Alyssa Brito leading off the inning with a hit. Fifth hit of the game for the Sooners. And this is the fourth, the third inning, excuse me, third of the four innings so far that Oklahoma's had a leadoff batter that they've got on base. And so, you know, that just makes it so challenging. Oklahoma's hitting over 500 as a team 
in that leadoff position. So it doesn't matter who's leading up in what part of the batting order. They are very determined and have been very successful getting on base. Jocelyn Erickson, freshman now with a runner to work with as she gets her second look at what Lauren Krings can do. Popped up the third back in the second inning. That was the best defensive inning for Missouri as they sat down Oklahoma consecutively in this part of the order, seven, eight, nine. Erickson went down for it, and then Brito had to leap over the ball. Erickson out at first. Riley Boone now the batter. She also popped up to Kara Daly over at third in her first at bat. Boone at the bottom of the lineup, but obviously a really big part of this Oklahoma team. Part of each of the last two national championships, a member of the College World Series all tournament team. Last year had a three run home run in game two of the champ series and she comes through here with a hit. This base hit on the slap was set up by what Riley Boone did the pitch before. She showed bunt and saw how Missouri shifts. And you see the second baseman Gallagher start to head toward first, just a couple steps as she brought the bat into that short game position. And Riley Boone is so good with her barrel control, she's able to take that pitch, slap it to the second base position, create a little chaos. We've got runners at the corners. I love when you find those small details, Carol. Point them out, all your years of coaching and working with the NFCA. I mean, those small details are so important. And picking out what Boone was looking at there. And now turning the lineup over to the always excitable Jada Coleman with runners on the corners. Runner is going to second, and she overslid. That actually might have been an opportunity to tag. But Gallagher wasn't even looking. Very concerned about that runner on third, understandably. And that's what happens when you have a runner at third. It's a quick tag from Gallagher, but now she's looking up for the runner at home, does not even realize that Raleigh Boone gave up the base there, and they certainly had an opportunity for that secondary tag in the out. Looks like we're going to have a video review on the first part of the tag and the slide. Mm. That is indeed the case as our umpire crew will speak with those who are in control and watching one central location. Send them down what they see. We'll take another look as well. The call on the field was safe as Boone slid in. It's like Boone's hand gets on the base as the tag is coming down. But it's it's the fact that she overslid the bag had Gallagher, you know, stuck with it a little longer. But easier said than done. When you're turning your head away from the runner at third, you're really relying on your teammates to communicate whether that runner from third is breaking. But clearly Boone slides past the base and, and uh, Gallagher had an opportunity for the out. I don't know that. We've seen anything there that would change the call on the field. And indeed, home plate umpire Scott Tomlinson confirms that the call is upheld.
So Boone is at second, Brito at third, Coleman at the plate with one out. Jada Coleman, the home run leader for this Oklahoma team. You and I were talking before, Carol, about how unique, really, that is. Your leadoff hitter being your top home run hitter. Jada hit her 15th of the season yesterday. And a home run here would put this game in danger of ending early in the next inning. Pop ball. And now the throw home. It's a great and Missouri takes one away. You talked about the Missouri defense. Be Let's talk a little bit about your pitcher, Patty, and just what you like from her. We've really enjoyed just watching Jordy's demeanor out there as well as what she does. How have you seen that develop all season? As she came here like that, it's not like she developed it once <laughs> she got here. Um, just really a absolute competitor and today really complete control a lot of good mixing of pitches and just very confident she kind of bleeds that into our team coach such a, a powerful lineup one through nine and on the bench but noticing a lot of uh, batting order changes really over the last few weeks what goes into that decision specifically Hanson moving up today matchups and the pitcher that we believe we're going to face who uh, has better um, numbers off of, you know, so it's more of just seeing what uh, fits our hitters to who's on the mound. So we have a few different lineups and we're ready to use whatever we need. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, you guys. Well, no matter the tinkering, it has found a way to work throughout most of the season for Patty Gasso. All that homework paying off along with a whole boatload of talent to choose from no matter where they happen to be hitting in the lineup. Yeah, I love that. Some coaches, they get a set lineup and they go with it and they just stick with it all year. And there's a lot of strengths to that. Team knows what to expect. But with Oklahoma, you know, they're going with the hottest hitters. And I love that. Well, speaking of hottest hitters, the hottest hitter for Missouri is up right now. Jenna Laird was retired in her first at bat, but this is the top of the order. Obviously a crucial part of this game right now for Missouri to try to make something happen. Their best hitters coming up in Laird and Honnold, followed by Daly. A lot of times you look at pitchers and you try to decipher their, their strikeouts. How are they getting their strikeouts? And with Jordy Ball, she's getting a lot of swings and misses and from the better hitters in other teams' lineups. And that means that you're putting some funny stuff on the ball. You know, you're spinning the ball through the zone. You're working both sides of the plate, also stretching the zone vertically. A lot of times when coaches are out recruiting, they'll, they'll say that. They're looking for a lot of swings and misses from a pitcher. And you notice that blue on catcher Hansen's the front of her chest plate there. Kinsey wears that specifically when Jordy Ball is pitching. Found out that Jordy likes the color blue. It calms her down a bit. So I guess that's her, her catcher's way of trying to keep her pitcher calm and in the zone. That's that visual. I mean, everybody on the field is looking at the catcher every pitch. And so there's a lot of responsibility from a leadership standpoint, but also your pitcher is looking right at the catcher every pitch. Just a good visual for Jordy Ball. A little high brings us to a full count now. Ball has struck out the last three Missouri batters. Laird not going down without a fight. Had that big four for four day yesterday with a couple of doubles. 
You know, early in her career, remember Larissa Anderson telling us that she, she thought of Jenna Laird as quiet thunder. I don't, I don't know if the quiet part can apply anymore after what she's done the last few years for Mizzou. She is patient and will take the walk. That is the first walk issued by the Oklahoma pitching staff in this regional and the first base runner for Missouri in this game. Also something very rare from Ball coming into this game, 143 strikeouts, only 33 walks given up. Just a patient at bat, disciplined at bat from Jenna Laird. And now you feel like Missouri can play their game offensively a little bit. They have some options. Laird, such a stolen base threat, 30 of them on the season. Arnold struck out her first at bat, but one of the top hitters all season long for Missouri, all region selection. Well, just a veteran catcher move there from Kinsey Hansen, knowing her pitcher threw a lot of pitches to Jenna Laird, gave up the walk. Threw a ball on the first pitch to Alex Honnold, just going out to calm her pitcher down, give her some words of encouragement, some tips. Just a veteran move. Honnold's number two all time at Missouri in terms of slugging percentage, junior this year for the Tigers. But she takes a big cut and now finds herself in a bit of a hole. Well, and typically in this situation, Missouri would love to run with Jenna Laird. 30 stolen bases on the season. But Oklahoma has only given up eight Eight successful stolen bases all season long, and the score of the game here being down five. Can sense that this crowd is just ready to react. They want another strikeout from Ball. Honnold so tough up there as well, just as Laird had a, an at bat that she fought through. There is the strikeout call. I was ready for it that time from our umpire. This off-speed pitch from Jordy Ball flips it over. It floats right into the bottom part of the zone and freezes the best hitter in the Missouri lineup in Alex Honnold. Well, you mentioned some of Kira Daly's heroics, consecutive walk-off home runs to win the final two games of the series and take the series against 12th ranked Arkansas. It was the final regular season series for the Tigers. And the only one that they were able to win, but what an important one it was. And Daly obviously playing a huge part in that. Two-o count now to Daly. This one gets called for a strike, so two one the count. Big moment for Mizzou. Top stolen base threat on first and Laird. Daly pops it up and ball cannot quite get to it. Surprised Hansen didn't come out for it with all the spin on that ball. Well, we saw this happen earlier in the game and <laughs> The battery almost collided. Fortunately for Oklahoma, no one was hurt. Kenzie Hansen 
made the out, but Hansen just lost it. And that happens sometimes as a catcher. You know, you, you have a general idea, you see the batter swing, but you really can't see it. And sometimes you can't get to it. And Ball wisely let the ball drop and go foul before she touched it. Another foul ball, this one back behind the stands. Up over the glove of Ball, and then it is off the glove of Lions. Now, runners on the corners for Missouri. A walk put Laird on. See how this one is scored. It was not much that Jordy Ball could do about that, but you're not used to seeing Lions not get it in her glove, even though that would have been a difficult play, and it is ruled a hit. It's the first of the game for Missouri. Yeah, no doubt about it. That would have been an exceptional play from Lions up the middle to be able to throw her out. Good base running by Laird as well to pick up the ball early, get all the way to third base. Can Missouri make something of this opportunity? Julia Crenshaw, sophomore catcher up at the plate. Hit it back to the pitcher in her first at bat. Foul down the line. And Kara Daly just three stolen bases on the season. But you have to wonder, does Missouri play with that a little bit? Get this Oklahoma defense to think with Laird standing on third. O2. Hit in the dirt, Laird waiting to see where it goes. The throw to first and the runner will go to second, but Laird has to hang out at third. Solid defensive play by Brito, good decision. The ball is miss hit. So Laird cannot go on contact, it's right to Brito, but she's able to take a quick peek she can see Laird in front of her, makes a good cross body throw. Not easy to do on the run. Perfect strike to get the second out of the inning. Up to Riley Frizzell now. Junior still looking for her first hit of the regional 0 for 3 yesterday. Round out to the shortstop first time up. Fouls it back, and now you feel like Jordy Ball has her right where she wants her at Frizzell, so not quite the crescendo the crowd was building to, waiting for the strikeout. They'll build it up again. Great atmosphere. As you would imagine, this state, this town loves their Sooners. How good they've been. Well, this is the first real adversity that Ball has faced in this game. And you see that same demeanor, that same poise, of enthusiasm, enthusiasm, but certainly poised in the circle. One strike away from getting out of this inning. 
And there it is. Missouri threatens. They walk. They hit, but they cannot score. Are so good for the Sooners as we move to the fifth inning in this first of three games today from Norman, Oklahoma. This one in the winner's bracket. This is the money game, as my friend Carol Bregovan likes to call it. One where you can set yourself up for success. You know you just have to win one more on Sunday to go to a Super Regional. Good start once again to the inning. Tiare Jennings leading off with a hit, and that has been a consistent theme in this game so far for Oklahoma. Four out of the five innings that a leadoff batter's come up for Oklahoma, this has happened. Either a base hit or a walk. They come at you right out of the gate. Tiare Jennings, after leaving her first two at-bats empty-handed, some weak fly balls, really takes matters into her own hands, even though that pitch was on the outer half. She absolutely crushed it into left field. Looks like the Tigers are going to make a pitching change for the first time in this NCAA regional. We'll tell you who's coming into the circle when we come back. Subway just keeps getting better. You know, giving her a little longer leash today than, than typically, but there's no doubt, should they not come back and win this game, they're going to need Lauren Krings. There's no doubt about it. Seven hits on the day for Oklahoma. Five run lead for the Sooners. Jennings aboard with her first hit of the afternoon. And now Haley Lee, the batter. She's two for two so far. Single and a double. Laird, gold glove shortstop trying to work two, not quite. Exactly what Schumacher is in the game for. Create some ground balls for your defense. Haley Lee does get on, gets on top of this ball, doesn't get her barrel to the bottom part of this ball. That's the hustle down the line to avoid a double play from Missouri. So Lee on first and Kinsey Hansen up at the plate. Hit a two-run home run last time she stepped in the box. And in the regional so far, Carol, she's just been on fire. You said she may be the hottest hitter here. Four for five, a double home run. Six RBI has scored three <laughs> runs. Yeah, that's pretty good, Jen. I'd say so. Well, and those numbers, that's another reason for the pitching change going back to that conversation there's so many things that go into a pitching change and there's no exact science but when the pitching change was made Haley Lee was two for two against Krings and of course Kinsey Hansen we know what she did last time and her last at bat hit the home run against Krings so a lot of those decisions as well going into the the pitching change Schumacher has to field her position and does for out number two And you heard her defense the minute that ball was hit. They they wanted the double play. They wanted her to go to second. Not sure if Shoemaker just felt like the ball was taking her to first base already or just wasn't in position to make the play. But, I mean, she's come in and got two quick outs, two batters, two outs. Sydney Sanders now the batter. Arizona State transfer. Runner all the way over to third on that ball, getting away. Tigers were able to work themselves out of a difficult situation the last inning with some good defense. 
This ball pops away. The runner's coming home, and the battery cannot make the play. Crenshaw tossed it back to Schumacher, but not in time to catch Lee. Oklahoma will force you to play defense. Haley Lee makes her decision, fully commits to getting into the plate, goes straight in, beats the ball, and this is an Oklahoma team that the minute the ball gets away, they are going to make you pay. Back-to-back -back wild pitches, advance Lee to third, and then allow her to score, and Oklahoma now leading 6-0. Sandra Swing makes us look at a full count now. Schumacher's had to do a lot more than just pitch since coming into this game. Fielded a ground ball that came her way, had that play at the plate. Nothing like getting thrown right into the fire. Yeah, it's been a, just kind of an odd inning in terms of that. Oklahoma scores another run, really just had the leadoff hit, but other than that, no hits in the inning, yet they score a run because of their aggressive base running. Sanders, oh my, that one is over the scoreboard and gone. As a hitter, when you know, you know, when you connect with one and watch Sid Sanders. Drop the bat immediately. Every hitter out there knows when you are on time and connect and have that type of power, this ball goes into Home Run Village. Home Run Village is pumped about it. <laughs> what an at-bat from Sid Sanders. Worked into a full count, got the pitch she wanted, absolutely blasted it to the outfield. <clears throat> and just like that, Oklahoma now a run away from what would potentially be another run rule victory. And the Sooners as a program have the most run rule victories in NCAA tournament history. They had their 31st yesterday, beating Hofstra 11 to nothing in five. Now, of course, Missouri gets an opportunity to bat in the bottom of this inning and Oklahoma still needs one more run, but setting you up on the potential because you said it earlier carol this team can get on you in a hurry all of a sudden it looks like missouri has a chance to end the inning get out of it a couple times they can't and here they sit down seven this should end the inning and does so oklahoma will have to settle for seven but the sooners looking good at oklahoma in front bottom of the fifth sooners the visitors in this matchup and Missouri needed to make something happen, but they had their best inning offensively in the last inning. Got their first hit of the game, had their first base runners of the game. So see if they can continue to build on some of that momentum here in the fifth. Really, the first inning, last inning, the ball had to pitch out of some trouble. He's only faced two batters over the minimum at this point. Defense playing solid behind her as well. Maddie Gallagher, the junior second baseman, now facing a 1 2 count. First year with Missouri, as there's a new right fielder. 
for the Sooners. Torres has come in out in right field and Gallagher will have to sit down. Ball doing what she does best. And that one's coming at you with pure heat. We've seen her have the rise ball for a strikeout, off-speed pitch for a strikeout. That one just, yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. One ball, three strikes. <laughs> Love that sign. <laughs> that is a good one. I appreciate any sort of wordplay and puns. Well, we have a pinch hitter here for Missouri. Katie Chester had a pinch hit single to lead off the seventh inning when she came into the game yesterday. See if the freshman can have a similar type of success this time around. <laughs> Got to find a way to keep up with one ball Three strikes, Jordy Ball in the circle. It's two strikes at the moment. Oh, working from ahead more this inning. She's been working from ahead the entire game until the last inning. And has been much more efficient with her pitch count this inning. Nothing doing on that pitch. Two to the count. Lions on top of it. Two down. Well, there's a lot of words to describe the type of defense that Grace Lyons plays, but the, the first one that comes to mind is just smooth. Everything she does is smooth. The way she feels the ball, throws the ball. It's one of the best in the country. I thought you were going to let me guess a word, and I you won't believe me now, but I actually was going to say smooth. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it look easy. Yes, she does. Peyton Jackson, the batter. One of the seven strikeout victims thus far for Jordy Ball in this game. is the bottom part of the Missouri lineup. Jackson hitting in the eighth spot. Maddie Snyder in nine would be on deck if Jackson can find a way on. Well, that rise ball that all throws is just so spinny. Gets under the ball. That 6 to 12 spin has a late jump to it. Just feel like with Jordy Ball, she's like a video game character, and every time she gets a strike, that power up, just that level goes up a little more, it just <laughs> feeds true. into her. Jackson pops it up. Boone in from the outfield to make the grab. And that will do it for inning number five. Sooners on top. They have no errors on defense, and they've only given up one hit in the circle. And it's just so impressive. And to think that in the history of our sport, it's never been done to have that complete of a team in the same year to be at the top in all three major areas. I mean, we, we could be witnessing history with this team. I think certainly that 
dynasty term would understandably be thrown around for what this Oklahoma team has done. Winning for the last six national championships. Have an opportunity to win three in a row. See all those 15 Women's College World Series appearances represented on the wall in the outfield here at Marita Hines Field. Brito hits it to Laird for out number one of the six. Uh, you could make an argument today that we have, as you look at all the national championships on the fence for Oklahoma, or on the uh, the home run area for, for Oklahoma, you could make an argument we have two of the best shortstops in the country in Jenna Laird and Grace Lyons right now. Jenna Laird won the first Rawlings Gold Glove Award for the shortstop position last year, certainly would be in contention this year. and. We've talked a lot about Grace Lyons and how she plays defense, but these these are two very special shortstops. Alina Torres, who came into the game in right field, now takes her first at bat for the Sooners. Started the game yesterday. Went one for one, walked in that run rule win for Oklahoma over Hofstra. Senior in her first year with the Sooner program after transferring from Arizona State. And when we talked to Patty Gasso during the game yesterday, I think she wants to see how some of these new faces, and she has a few of them like Torres. She knows what a lot of her players who were with her on those two championship runs the last couple years can do. She wants to see how these players handle the postseason stage. Well, Torres has herself another hit. One of the keys to being a successful hitter is to hit the ball where it's pitched. And this pitch is on the outer half of the plate. And Torres drives it with power to the 3 4 gap. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Doesn't try to. That's not a pitch. It was a little bit out of the zone, actually. Not a pitch you can really take deep to the fence, but just enough to get a hit. Situational hitting. Take what the pitch gives you. Ninth hit of the game by the Sooners. Riley Boone has one of those nine singled in her last at bat. And remember that one more run for Oklahoma would give this game the opportunity to end an inning early. Missouri will bat in the bottom half of the inning, but the eight runs, what would constitute a run rule? Sooners putting up two in the first, three in the third, and two more in the fifth to account for their seven. Megan Schumacher coming on in relief in this game for Lauren Krings, who's been the workhorse Krings throughout most of the season for Missouri. Schumacher, a senior. And with the 3 0 count, does get the needed strike. How about two in a row? Now the full count for Boone. No! Boone kisses this woman goodbye, but it is foul. And yeah, when you think about this team, and we've talked a lot about the amount of home runs they hit because it's a lot, 
and it's a big part of their game and how they score. But you don't think about Riley Boone. She does have a couple on the year, but this is a team that can hit the long ball through the lineup. They have 13 players in their lineup who have hit home runs this season. Yep, every player in that batting order at the moment has at least one. You were right on. Boone does have two on the season. Coleman, who's on deck, leads the way. Coleman spot would be on deck. Boone chops it out into center. And that will bring up the home run leader for the Oklahoma Sooners. Top of the order, Jada Coleman coming to the plate with two on. JT Gasso, really the leader of this Oklahoma offense. And you know, he says, I don't want to be known just as a hitting coach. I, I really train offense. And he's really a student of the game, not afraid to think outside the box. Done a fantastic job with the Oklahoma offense. Top hitting team in the country and the number one hitter on this top hitting team. You're looking at her right there. And you wonder if Jada Coleman comes into this at bat a little hungry. Couple of walks so far in this game. She flew out to right her last at bat. Ball redirects over into the Sooner dugout. Looks like everybody's okay. Thought about it. Didn't quite go after it though. 3-1. Oklahoma showing good discipline, really making Schumacher work deep into the pitch count. Boy, Jada Coleman does not hold back on any swing, does she? <laughs> she I told you she looked hungry. That was a hungry <laughs> swing. I was a, I want a piece of this action swing. <laughs> of course, she knows a walk is beneficial as well. Full count. And she will take the walk. Bases loaded now for the first time in this game for Tiara Jennings. Jennings and Coleman, both USA Softball Player of the Year, top 25 finalists. Did not make it into that final three, but before Jennings gets to go to work. Bases loaded, one out, Jennings at the plate for Oklahoma. Doesn't waste any time. This will just be a long out. It will get another run across. So not just a long out. Adds that important eighth run to the scoreboard for Oklahoma. New pitcher, no problem for Tiara Jennings. This is the first pitch she sees, was hunting a pitch on the outer part of the plate. Gets the sack fly. Just a productive at bat, and that's what Oklahoma can do. Each batter really taking a lot of pride in having a productive at bat, doing something positive for the team. For Tiara Jennings right there, it's a sack fly, as you mentioned, to get the eighth run of the game. 
And Missouri now in, in danger of, that, of uh, that run rule. Pinch hitter coming in for the Sooners. Sophia Nugent had a hit and a pinch hit appearance on Friday as well. That's really just an embarrassment of riches if you're Oklahoma, considering Nugent comes in to pinch hit for Haley Lee, who was two for two with a fielder's choice, reached every time she stepped to the plate and scored three runs. And sometimes when you have a game like this where your team has built a lead, you're trying to give other players opportunities. It also is nice to take a hitter out like Haley <laughs> Lee feeling good at the same time. Sorry, I'm just giggling as that fan was trying to hide the ball. Like, I don't know where it went. <laughs> it's definitely not under my jacket. Emma Nichols working with a 1-2 count against Nugent, sophomore out of Seal Beach, California. Ooh, that one got away from her. Another pinch hitter on the way with the bases loaded again for Oklahoma. Quincy Lilio, redshirt freshman out of Oceanside, California. She'll take her first at bat of the postseason. Redshirted last year, as I mentioned, and appeared as a pinch runner Friday against Hofstra. Did wind up scoring a run. Now she'll get a chance to bat. Concern here maybe for Nichols as the last pitch came way inside to hit Nugent and this one well outside the strike zone. Yeah, certainly has not settled in. I mean, tough situation to come in, but you know, her team needs her. Her team needs her to come in. Two outs here. Really throw some competitive pitches, you know, and, and that that one in particular was just something. The last two pitches before that, you know, not difficult decisions for the Oklahoma hitters at all. Runners all around. Tigers will have the top part of their lineup coming up when they come to the plate. Would like to at least limit the damage to what's already been put up on the scoreboard. Three one now though. Nichols in need of a strike or at least a swing. And she won't get it. Walks in the run. You know, it's not easy to do as a pinch hitter to come in in general and let alone not be able to swing the bat. I mean, you, you, you want your opportunity. You want to show what you can do. But drawing a walk is just as important as showing you have good plate discipline. We've seen some really productive, even though you know, we don't have any hits from the pinch hitters, they found their way on base. Yeah, one hit by a pitch, one walked, and now let's see what Grace Green does. Another pinch hitter into the lineup for Oklahoma, the redshirt senior 
appeared in Friday's game as a pinch hitter as well. Did not get a hit, so she comes in looking for one and gets it. One pitch was all she needed to get a hit and score two more. How about that for the redshirt senior? Well, the hit parade continues. Oklahoma showing you their depth from the bench. This pitch is inside. It's a little inside out swing. But Green has enough power to get it to the outfield. Two more runs for Oklahoma. That is exactly what makes up a dynasty. The pinch hitter parade continues. Avery Hodge, another freshman, comes on for the Sooners. Oh, the only freshman, I should say, in this pinch hit parade. We've had a redshirt senior. Oh, there was a redshirt freshman. I thought there was one in there. Lilio, Nugent, a sophomore. First NCAA regional at bat for Hodge. Made an appearance as a pinch runner on Friday. And there you got to look at that off-speed pitch from Pinnell. And uh, Hodge wasn't looking for it either. You could see her knees buckled just a little bit. It's a very impactful pitch from Pinnell. She throws it back to back. A little smile on the face of the freshman. She was ready to swing that time, but didn't make contact. And now the Tigers end the inning, but three hits, four more runs for the Sooners. Last chance for the Tigers coming up. Sooners out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, coming in to try to finish this one off, Carol. Yeah, and it really has some quality innings down the stretch here for Oklahoma and gives them a look from the left side. Really likes to work down in the zone, can heat the ball up to the upper 60s. Very bright future for Deal in the circle for the Oklahoma Sooners. So the Tigers have Maddie Snyder, who hits in the nine spot in the lineup, and then it will be top of the order for the Tigers. They are in danger at the moment of this one ending an inning early here with Oklahoma having enough runs to get that run rule victory. Number of defensive changes all around for the Sooners as they used four straight pinch hitters in that last inning. Nugent is behind the plate, Hodge at shortstop. And then Boone and Lilio. Boone moving around in the outfield from center to left. Center from left, excuse me, and Lilio coming into left. Big swing, nothing but air. And you have to feel if you're Missouri, even a little bit of something positive here, even if it doesn't catch you up 11 runs that you need to keep up with Oklahoma, you gotta be thinking you've got more softball to play later today. We have our first elimination game coming up next. Hofstra, Cal, Golden Bears will face off. The winner of that game will take on the loser of this game to finish off the day. Of course, the winner here gets to, as Carol says, go put their feet up, have some snacks and some smoothies, get comfortable, and get ready for one more game tomorrow, they hope. Team would have to beat them twice, whoever. And at this point, looks like it would be Oklahoma.
Well, as it is with any tournament, staying in the winner's bracket is so favorable. You get so much more rest. You know, you don't have that mental stress. You know, with your back against the wall, you just stay in that winner's bracket, and it really does set you up for success for tomorrow. And when a team has to not only fight through to get through tonight, but beat you twice tomorrow. Another full count pitch, and Snyder got stuck, but swing, swung, anyway. <laughs> and is the strikeout. Sometimes the words just don't come out right. We all knew what you meant, Jen. Swing, swung, We all knew what you meant. <laughs> Big start for the freshman in the circle. Yeah. Top of the order, Jenna Laird went four for four yesterday. Just a walk and a ground out in this one against the Sooners. Well, we showed you, talked about earlier how Oklahoma currently leads the nation in offense, run scored per game, defense, defensive fielding percentage and then ERA in the circle. And this happens a lot with team. They'll get four at bats in a game, even though we're on the verge of a potential run rule victory, Oklahoma will still have four at bats in a game. And you look down at the visiting team. This is just, just turning the line up over for the third time. Another strikeout, this time looking for deal. But you see this a lot, the, the visiting team, or the opposing team, I should say, for Oklahoma, they're, they're just starting to turn their lineup over. And this game is one out away from ending. And the majority of Missouri's lineup got two at-bats. Just showing you their dominance in all parts of the game. Seven strikeouts in this game for Jordy Ball. And then she hands the ball over to freshman Kirsten Deal in this sixth inning. And it's been nothing but strikeouts so far. And if you follow Oklahoma softball enough, you know that this program has a long history of successful left-handed pitchers. And uh, Deal hoping to be the next in that club, in that group. Alex Honnold pops it up and game over. Sooners on their way to the regional final with their 45th consecutive win of the season.